everybody, and again, thank you for having me here. I hope you've had a really good couple of days. Fortunately, I've come in straight from Brussels this morning, so I haven't had the pleasure of being here through the rest of the programme, but from what I see, it looks as though it's been a really exciting um, agenda. So I'm here this morning to sort of wrap up this plenary and to really, I guess, pick up a little bit on some of the things that both Jennifer and Lars touched on themselves and actually put this into maybe a little bit more of a case study perspective from the pharmaceutical industry, which is what I represent. So the aim of this session really is for you as, as delegates here to this session this morning to maybe help raise awareness and understanding a little bit more about what text mining means and the part that it can play in enhancing scientific research because um, that's fundamentally what we do in the pharma industry. We do scientific research. And they're going to be referring quite extensively to this little briefing that you should have all received this morning. I know Audrey's worked very hard to get it published for today's um, meeting. And uh, Lars and myself both had the pleasure of being able to contribute to this. So I'm going to, as I say, draw on a few of the points that are mentioned in this and encourage you each to take this away as part of that educational and awareness program to maybe understanding a little bit more about some of the things that Lars touched on um, and some of the things that I'm going to mention and how we see text and data mining in the industry. So, very, very simple agenda then. I'm going to keep it very simple. I think that's the key when it comes to text mining. Because, you know, I've had the pleasure for the last 12 months of being president of the PDR, the Pharma Documentation Ring, representing 25 pharmaceutical companies in the world. Some of the top, top players are up there. And aside from being a professional um, organization where we can learn and leverage insight from one another within the, the sort of information and scientific knowledge space, it's also become respected as an association that can be an influencer in the industry and an educator in the industry. And maybe very briefly, I should sort of put that into context, in the context of this briefing, in that back in the October 2013, the PDR brought together industry representatives, academia, Lars was there, publishers, so many of you guys were there, ALSP was there, um, STM was there, a number of different aggregators, rights owners, they all came together for a meeting in, in Bruges. And as part of that meeting, we really just wanted to share learnings and knowledge around what text and data mining meant. And what were the challenges that we were facing, both in academia, in, re in the commercial space? What were the challenges that you were facing as providers, publishers, software um, deliverers? And out of that meeting, there were obviously some some, some, some general um, outcomes. One of them obviously was around the, the actual policies around text and data mining, which you know Jennifer has started to address very nicely this morning. The second thing was around the actual requirements for text and data mining, particularly from the, the, the commercial perspective um, as well as academia. And the, the third piece that came out was around licensing models and business models. And so it was a fruitful meeting over 100 people coming together, sharing knowledge, open, honest um, discussion. And from that meeting, that then led to a subsequent um, working group, if you like, coming together in Copenhagen earlier in 2014, which again, there was a, a, an invited um, guest list there, to actually further some of those discussions and to think about how we could take that forward into the industry. And as I say, the briefing that you've got today is one of the outcomes from that meeting where Audrey came up to me afterwards and she you know, said, I, what the industry really needs is to, some education, some awareness. So again, we don't need to dwell too much on this because if Lars has done a good job, you should all know now what text mining is about. It's the activity of adding structure to large sets of data being able to do trend analysis and visualize the results in, 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 in new ways. It's about finding the unknown. 
It enables the researcher to see the bigger picture through the clustering of information and finding answers to specific questions. So again, it becomes a really embedded research tool within the workflow. So, in the commercial space, how is text mining used? Again, it, it comes back to elements of, of, of what Lars described in his session. It's used to enhance scientific and innovative research. What I thought might be useful is to actually just include a few examples here from the perspective of a pharmaceutical company. Text mining may be literature and patent analysis. It could be focused around biomarker discovery or drug, re drug repurposing. It can be used in drug safety, competitive intelligence, looking at the influence that key opinion leaders may have in a particular therapeutic space, and understanding how that translates into publications and knowledge and insight from those KOLs. Sentiment analysis. What is someone actually saying around a particular therapeutic area, or in the case of a specific company, around a particular product? How can that be linked together to take away lessons learned? They're just a few examples, which again, are very much built into the research process within the pharma industry. So the actual requirements then, this isn't a demanding list, it's just an, an open view on what the ultimate uh, requirement is, I guess, to be able to do this research activity in the commercial space effectively. So we all know there's loads and loads of data sets out there, and we know that the purpose of text mining is bringing these data sets together, is putting some kind of structure into it. And so it's very much about bringing data sets into an environment where we can look at that data or look at that text and minimize the risk of overlooking critical pieces of that information. From a company perspective, that can be not just the, the licensed information that um, we invest heavily in as an organization, but that may also be the non-licensed information. Because obviously a key piece of this is trying to encapsulate as much information as possible. It may combine open access information, or um, it may even combine information from, from blogs and public websites, forums. The biggest challenge from a, from a research perspective in, 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 the, in the organization is really being able to access this information in a compliant way that obviously manages the IP for yourselves as providers and that enables us as researchers in a scientific organization to be able to access it in a normalized way. So in a format that we can actually do the research that we would like to do on it. Because as, um, again, Lars mentioned, you know, the, one of the challenges we have is it becomes, it comes in this very unstructured format that it varies from provider to provider. And in the, industry, in the commercial sector, it's, it's so encouraging to see so many different providers trying to progress this challenge in the, in, in, in the text mining space. You know, again, a few of the, the initiatives mentioned in this uh, briefing. And it's, it's great to see that out there, there is a, a, a kind of shift towards making um, some of these requirements a reality and actually meeting the needs of that researcher. So, you know, the requirement is to have, you know, not just one aggregator out there, but to have several that are making that mineable data available and representing both long-tail and small-tail publishers. Because that's the challenge, is bringing all that data together. So I've touched a little bit already on the challenges, and, you know, the... Again, it picks up from the, the, the presentation at the beginning of the session. You know, one of the things that as an organization, as a researcher, you want to do is you want to make sure that you can actually mine the data and do it in that compliant way. And again, as, as we know from Jennifer's presentation, there's been a lot of uncertainty around um, whether you can text and data mine information. There is that lack of standardization. And from a researcher's perspective, that is a challenge. It's not always easy to, to get the data sets 
from all the different providers out there, from the very small um, publishing houses right the way through to the, the larger ones. A challenge from a researcher's perspective is that you may end up with a very, very large data set. It's a challenge. It's quite an expensive and labor-intensive activity. There's high costs for setting up text and data mining workflows, particularly when you're trying to create your corpus, both in terms of a researcher's time and effort and in actually building up that corpus of, of data and information from uh, mineable activities. I'll be honest with you. There's a lack of technical skills and expertise within the organization. I'm sure within some of your own organizations, maybe you're just starting to think about this particular activity and how it may enhance the content portfolio which you deliver to the academic and commercial world. There's lack of technical skills. And as was very clear from the PDR meeting um, earlier in the year and, and last year, there's a lack of understanding as to what text and data mining really means, which, as I say, led to, the, led to this briefing that you've received today. So, something that I'm sure is of benefit to you out there this morning. Benefits for providers, rights owners, aggregators. It's an opportunity to help protect your rights. Uh, to help protect your IP. There's opportunities to be part of industry initiatives that will provide auditable processes where you can control how the content and data is used. There may be the potential to add value to your existing portfolio offerings by enabling API access and rich data sets for text and data mining purposes. And we heard very nicely from some of the um, activities, again, that Elsevier are involved with and that has the potential to be a, a, a good portfolio offering. Hopefully music to some of your ears, potential new revenue stream. Um, you know, there's, there's definitely something there to actually say, well, in a commercial, in a, res in, a, in a research function of a commercial industry, we're not there expecting to do it for nothing. There's new revenue streams. And there's an opportunity to promote new content. Because don't forget, we're, we're looking way beyond just the licensed information in the commercial workplace. So, to very briefly summarize then, certainly within my organization and in much of the pharma industry, text mining is, is very much a niche expert activity. It clearly does play an important part in enhancing scientific research. Industry education and understanding is key. There is opportunities for providers to add value to their content offerings, offerings and potential for new revenue streams. And cooperating in industry initiatives are great ways of protecting the IP in a managed way and to help build revenue streams. I guess the final statement here is that robots are definitely walking in this space, but we don't know whether it will be a case of robot wars or merely a, the battle of a human brain versus the mechanical brain. So I would just say to you guys to watch this space and see how this develops. Thank you.